Uli, we just, we love you. We bless you in the name of Yeshua. And uh, we are so thankful for your, your holding fast, you and your husband there in um, Herrenhut, Germany, and for the many, many things that you're, you're called to and that you're participating in for the ways that God has put you in strategic places at strategic times, including in Israel, where you were recently, and uh, and we just say that that this year is going to be the best year that you've ever had, you and your husband and your family. We just declare uh, more than enough provision for all of you. We declare divine health. We declare um, that uh, renewed strength, great favor, great wisdom, and uh, and also just protection. That as you are stepping out in the Lord increasingly that um, the Lord would hide you in the shelter of his wings, that no harm would come to you or your family. And, uh, and that, again, that the best days of your life and your ministry are ahead of you and not behind you. And may the joy of the Lord be your strength in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Uli, over to you. Yes, I welcome everyone on this Shabbat call on Good Friday, 2024. And in the good old days, I wouldn't be sitting on an online Shabbat call, but sit at the Moravian Church in Hernhut right now, where there is uh, the meeting honoring and commemorating the death, the hour Jesus died on the cross. And it is one out of many, many church meetings uh, during the uh, Passion Week uh, that is... Um, and heritage of, of the, the Mor Moravian, Moravian church and the traditions I, I grew up until um, when uh, we got married, decided um, that in our family, we would, we, we would want to follow the calendar and the feast of the Lord, um, which puts us in, in a position um, sitting in between the chairs, even, even within the church. And I was uh, so thrilled at uh, Susan's uh, post uh, concerning the Easter week, because it so resonated with my spirit. And as I was uh, praying what to bring to the Shabbat table on Good Friday, whether it will be something out of the Torah portion or uh, a litany of the dying Christ or whatever. I was like, all those <laughs> things were really wrestling in my heart. And why, when I, I read through, through, through the post and in the, on the signal thread in, in the Global Watch community also, um, what Winston and others posted, um, I think there over the years has been uh, good teaching on um, on this on this connection and uh, those past 25 years have taken us on a journey where I feel as a family we have left something behind uh, of like a Gentile church culture. Um, and haven't really arrived yet to where we where we are heading to, and in I think with very few topics, I feel it's so evident that the kingdom of God both has arrived and is yet to come. As yeah, with this position in between which doesn't concern our individual salvation and, and knowing about God's love and his sacrificial death on the, on the cross and our acceptance. But, but how do, do we walk that out individually and corporately to come in realignment with the rhythm of God's heartbeat, with his appointed times and uh, 
in rare occasion, uh, those uh, dates uh, coincide. Um, we are now talking about the Western Easter and and the the Hebrew calendar with the pests over. We heard Katya on the Russian watch talking about the Orthodox Easter, which only, which again is a month later only uh, in, uh, in, in sync with, with the Jewish Passover. And um, I, I don't, I don't have a good sermon or teaching to present you. I, I'm just, I'm just sharing sharing my heart and, and bring that to the table to even ask for your own experiences of um, how you how you were led by the Lord, uh, how you first came, uh, how, how this question of, of, of that difference between, between church church culture and and the biblical understanding of the feasts of the Lord came to your door. <laughs> And and uh, what are the questions that you deal with, even even on a day to day basis? Because I experienced that that those feasts, especially, uh, you you cannot really do alone. It's something uh, that that forges community, and that only is experienced. Uh, rightly in community. And so what is the community around us that uh, will uh, experience this with us? I am so grateful for the Global Watch family and how over the years, God really put his finger on, on Israel on Shabbat, on the feast, on the end times, and and that we we get alert to to these themes. On the other hand, I had a late night conversation with uh, my teenage daughter yesterday, who grew up with uh, family Passover Seder and uh, with the messianic focus on Yeshua and. Um, who has parents deeply involved in all that Israel stuff. And um, she said, mom, I feel kind of alienated to this because um, all those Israel and end time uh, preachings and prayer watches have so little to do with my daily world and my friends around me. and." And on the other hand, uh, the, the circles where I find it attractive to invite friends to is uh, churches where uh, Israel and the end times are totally off, <laughs> off topic. It's like a topic strangely avoided. And, and so how to, how to reconcile this world? How do you experience to um, how to experience it in your own family and in the in the spiritual surrounding the body, the local body God has placed you. Now, I'm not a good moderator with this. I just bumped all those questions on the table, and I just want to open the mic for a family conversation. And I have no idea how many people are on the call and how. Um, how um, actively you're going to participate if this is something rather done in small groups or um, you raise your hand and we'll have active listeners. And I know it's, it's a very, very broad topic. So I just pray that the Lord will uh, sift through and bring those uh, testimonies and questions to the table or to the mic right now that become food for thought and 
and a seed in our hearts um, to ponder and to pray into. Because I believe that um, as, as times in, intensify, uh, these, these questions get, get more crucial. And as I was thinking about a worship song, I had, um, I had a song literally ringing in my ear uh, that an, an old church hymn in German, and I fortunately found it in English. Uh, it is sung during the Advent season, but I find the text so at point for the season, even the day we are in. And, and it starts with a big question mark. The song is uh, uh, written in six, in the 17th century by a man who experienced a lot of judgments and, and misery in, in his life. But uh, while he was heavily tested, um, he responded with worship and his songs have uh, been a great source of strength and encouragement for people in suffering, of, suffering over the centuries, Paul Gerhardt. And the song starts with a question, oh Lord, how shall I meet you? How welcome you a right? Thy people long to greet you, my hope, my heart's delight. O kindle, Lord, most holy, thy lamp within my breast, to do in spirit lowly all that may please thee, thee best. And this is, Lord, this is our heart's desire, that what we do, we want to do in the spirit, and in the spirit lowly, uh, to do what you may please best. Um, and uh, it, the song is long. It has 10 stanzas in German. And the last refers to what Sue Rao just prayed in the, in the last call about, uh, or an, an, an ongoing topic about the judgment of nations. The last stanza uh, goes like that. He comes to judge the nations, a terror to his foes a light of consolations and blessed hope to those who love the Lord's appearing. O glorious sun, now come, send forth thy beams so cheering and guide us safely home. Uh, I don't know whether uh, the song is familiar, but uh, it's, a, it's a famous ad, uh, song for the Advent season in Germany, but, or in German, but so, up to date for today for Good Friday and for the questions on the table. So uh, Shirley, can you play the song and you can use that time as we listen to the song and, and pray those words, those lyrics. Um, yeah, to, to start your, your conversation with the Lord and, and also ask for what you, what is your, what is the piece that you have you can bring to our Shabbat table today. Shirley, go ahead. My, my question is who, who has something to share, to bring to the table? Is, is this a, a tension or yeah, a wrestling um, within you, can you relate to those questions I shared? Or um, what is, um, how do you experience the Lord leading you in this, in your, both in your, in your personal uh, walk with the Lord and also in, in, in the corp, I think this is even the most, uh, curious thing for me to ask how do you experience that in the in the corporate setting of your um of 
uh, your your congregations and and the wider body of Christ that you're a part of. Well, Uli, I'll share. Uh, Thirty years ago, Bill and I came into the Messianic community, and we knew nothing. We had no idea that there were even what's called Messianic Jews. Um, we were invited to attend a congregation at a very um, tender time in our, our lives. And uh, we went and it was like being submerged the first night uh, up here when they lit those candles and they began to sing out of Revelation chapter four and chapter five in Hebrew and then sang it in English. Um, it was like being submerged in liquid honey. <laughs> That's all I can say, hot honey. And the presence of the Lord was so strong. And that night, our heart was so open to the Messianic community and the significance of what uh, the whole scripture uh, really embellishes is the truth that God is revealing himself and chose to reveal himself through a people called Israel. And it was, it's been 30 years of learning, 30 years of celebrating the feasts and the festivals. And they're, they're never the same. Um, there's generally whatever is taking place in the realm of the spirit where Israel is concerned is going to affect the atmosphere of what we're celebrating especially in times of the seder and passover um it was a transition it was a six-month transition because i was a pastor secretary when this happened and i felt like the lord clearly said anything with two heads is a monster and that was just a personal saying him saying it to me that i couldn't have the two leaders that were almost it and it was definitely there was opposition and i didn't get the opposition from the rabbi the jewish side but i got the opposition from an anti-semitic side <laughs> that i never recognized until i became a part of the messianic congregation and the richness of god's word that is uh, so filled with the truth of even the new covenant and what was taking place in that week of Passover, <laughs> we see so much of it proclaimed in the old covenant. And so these feasts and festivals are really and truly all about Yeshua. And so trying though, as you're talking about that tension, my family asked us, our, actually, Bill's family asked us, so are you guys Jewish now? And we said, we have a heart that has absolutely been open to Israel and to the Jewish people. And God has deposited something within us that we can't deny. But we will, no, we don't change our, um, our nationality. We don't change, you know, who we born to. We were born Gentiles with a call, a specific call as the Jewish people were created with a specific call. And so blending those two um, has been, a, was a challenge for the first 10 years. It's no longer really a challenge because now the lines are becoming more and more drawn as far as yesterday, we were in a Syrian restaurant eating lunch and somebody recognized us that we hadn't seen in many years. And she came over to us to tell us that um, they were having a celebration this coming weekend on Saturday. And that if I, could I come? And I said, well, I really can't because that's our day where we are in synagogue all day. And so she wanted to talk about Easter and Passover and asked me, why are so many congregations here in Florida celebrating Passover this week? And I said, well, all I can figure is that they're wanting to combine the two. So they're having a Seder and an Easter celebration at many congregations. So it's a, 
you know, for people who, whose eyes are opening, I think that it's a, a dilemma for them to understand how can they blend the two. And it's one thing to really celebrate Easter as the death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah. And another thing to celebrate it almost as a pagan holiday with the, all the add-ins that they have. And so there's a lot of talk that's going on, I think, within the body itself about these things as there's a, a illumination, a light that's coming and turning on the significance of not only Israel, but the God of Israel and what the scriptures literally say. So I think that being prepared um, with a heart of love and mercy towards the body of Messiah as a whole, that this is not a place for division. It's a place for actually bringing understanding and loving the rest of the body of Messiah. So um, that's just my thought on it. I could speak a lot. That's what I do. Um, <laughs> where Mibaz Ray, I met proclaimers of truth within our congregation and I love to start communications and like Shirley's sharing, it has been so wild of how that uh, learning of what the Lord is doing in our lives personally, but overall the rel relevant revelation as it were of Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah, the fullness of the Gentiles coming in. Uh, I have many testimonies that Day by day, we're living, and yet, Lord willing, about the future, there is never the uh, assuredness within and in and of ourselves, but yet, uh, the life and life more abundantly, while also knowing that our hearts are, uh, this is such a sensitive issue, it's kind of peculiar to me, as far as the Lord uh, storing our tears in his bottle, it's that when the of those of western christianity they love the lord and they're only seeing partially well israel is partially blind as romans 11 states but yet this deception uh things are made clear i'll just broach the subject of peter tsukahira's book equip as far as uh the reformers led the church back to the bible certainly but they failed to keep hold of the truth of God's love for Israel, for the Jewish people. And so in seeking to proclaim as reading even now Romans 10, how shall they hear without someone proclaiming? And so this conversation was so great with three men speaking of the battleground of the future of our nation. And I briefly spoke to them of three dreams I had of Donald Trump. And there's hope for our nation is what I state. And so along the lines of how that uh, when those of that love the Lord and are diligent Christians, not seeing a need of the old covenant or the Tanakh, um, my heart is just so like, oh, Lord, there's something peculiar here within me of the overall blindness the um so therefore the breakthrough coming i thank you all for allowing us to be a part of this where that we agree together of the overall plan the redemptive plan of the lord that there will be the breakthrough coming in some kind of way for the as it stated the church thank you bill uh and shirley Anyone else sharing from his or her experience? Lynette, go ahead. I'm so glad you facilitated just a discussion about this because, sorry, I'm, the sun is shining in a different way. Um, because because uh, as, we, as people were mentioning about the blending, like uh, Shirley had said, about having Seder during, a Passover Seder during Easter, it was like, ah, this is a little, this is a little awkward. And um, I just, I was so thankful that we could really talk about it because I think it brought me back to just the understanding as I've come here to Israel and, and been totally immersed in, in God's established time frame and everything that that involves. 
um, just going back to the reason, it's not how come right now, I asked myself, is anybody asking why people are celebrating Easter now when we know on our schedule that Passover is in um, three more weeks? You know, and and I said, is anybody talking about this? Is anybody asking that question? And so I just I just was thankful that you could bring it out because I I really hoped that people did. And Michael Nat and and Janet Jenny um mentioned that earlier on the the morning call about about repentance because the whole purpose how the christian world made a different calendar and decided it was about easter it was about the easter thing that they purposely made a different calendar this is why this is so critical to have this discussion because this was the thing that was said we have to separate from from the Jewish calendar and the Jewish people, they can't tell us when to have Passover. And so I think it's really important and I'm so thankful for you for paying the price in your own community to not be a part of community and yet to hold on to the fact that choices were made by church fathers back in the 300 and now we're stuck with it and many people don't wanna change. And it's not about um, shaming Easter people who are still doing Easter, but it's coming to a realization. God has a timetable and he's always moved on it. We get closer to the end times. I want to be on his timetable. So thank you again for, for facilitating this. And I hope many people, Michael, speak up and Hannah that really have also wrestled with this in their lives and, and care about um, the whole root of anti-Semitism. We cannot blend these two things because the root of the difference is an anti-Semitic root that said we can't be we can't be a part of that. And that's kind of not just the fact that they're at different times, but but the root is there. Thank you. I yeah I I wasn't really sure how much input uh we're we're going to have and whether uh it will, it will be, I know it is just starting off a conversation <laughs> on this call. It's, it's not even to come to a result or to come to the, to a conclusion. It is rather raising a question. And I, I, I'm an expert in, uh, in um, stirring uh, uncomfortable t questions. And often I experience that uh, when the Lord has me ask uh, a, a question in the in a personal conversation, it is often for me not to receive the answer, but to start a process in the the other person's heart, and that their answer is really between uh, them and the Lord. And as this, I want even to understand those questions <laughs> I I put out and. <clears throat> Uh, um, maybe Molly uh, and Elaine, if you can, if you can um, be concise with uh, or or even short with with your contributions, I'd love to hear you out. <laughs> well, thank you, Uri. I mean, what can I say? Yeah, I think it will have to be that. Um, you know, uh, the personal. I'm I'm just an ordinary Gentile. <laughs> I had no idea. And in my country, when I was in India, I never knew about Israel. I didn't know anything about. Uh, I mean, I've heard even even our history books studying about. Yeah, I didn't know about the Holocaust. But in this, in as only when I came to Australia and. Uh, coming close towards uh, when I got born again about understanding the blessings of Abraham that started my journey and from there to uh, God very divinely ordaining uh, a lady going to, to Israel bringing me a book called Abba's Feet and it was just me asking like a childlike 
questions to Abba Father saying, asking him small things. When I saw a shofar uh, uh, in, on a book called, and the shofar blew, and I asked him, what is a shofar? And the next thing I know is that he organizes, I got a, 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 a shofar all the way from Israel, right up my, my door. I'd never learned an instrument. I, I'd never blown one. And as soon as I put it to my mouth, it made a noise and it made a sound which was so unique. And God's calling into all these things from that to us um, uh, watching Rabbi Schneider on TV one day and uh, he teaching about your Jewish Messiah turned my heart to really unlock my heart to understanding that, oh, Jesus was Jewish. Until then, that revelation had not struck me. And from there to understanding, asking uh, about uh, the menorah and uh, the lampstand, and then God actually taking me on a small tour in during a holiday and actually being able to buy one. And I, when I saw one, I thought, how about I place one at my church? So becoming an influencer, how God influenced me, not just in my own home, but to introduce that uh, to my church, as well as speaking about that. And then the curiosity to ask God, oh, I'd love to visit Israel one day. And then he taking me to Israel, not just once, uh, and he did that as a whole family, then took me twice for prayer and everything. So that journey of just with the Holy Spirit asking questions and him answering my questions led me to a journey in understanding uh, the Jewish, the land, the people, the Messiah, my, my Savior, Jesus, as my Jewish Messiah, and the history. And now coming and falling in, in love with uh, the, 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 the love for the land, the people, the word of God, uh, and the feast of God. And, you know, studying the depth of it. And now into a bigger community like Global Watch, coming into Hernhut understanding all these mysteries, it's becoming, um, I just don't, it, from, I've passed on from curiosity to now coming into responsibility and accountability of, of not just knowing, but passing it on and, and making others aware. So that's where I am and I'm, I'm just in awe and Ulri, thank you so much for the opportunity to share this. Thank you. And my Global Watch family. I, yeah. would love, I would love you to write that sentence about from curiosity. You mentioned a few steps from curiosity to responsibility and accountability. Um, if you could, if you could uh, type that uh, in, the, in the meeting chat. Um, thank you. I want to be, uh, I want, I want to stick to the hour and, and on the other hand, uh, give you time to share. So I would love, uh, Hannah, Hannah Kosa, I would definitely love you to share. So, uh, Elaine and then Hannah. Thank you. Um, yes, Elaine, I do thank you for bringing this question up because, um, this is a tension that I, a huge, huge tension in my life, every time, every, or every day really. And I, I really don't know the answer how to deal with the tension because um, 40 years ago when God called me to be a watchman for the house of Israel, he began teaching me through his word, you know, about the, biblical feasts and everything. So I felt I was absorbing all this knowledge, but I had no outlet for it. And eventually I went to Israel and met the Messianic congregation there on Mount Carmel and spent a year there and gradually got to know more and more people. But locally, where I live in England, 
there are very, very few people who understand. And I feel I'm living in two worlds because I try and ask these awkward questions in my church that I belong to. And the people find them very awkward and they don't really want to know. Um, and so over the years, I've, I've kind of prayed about it and, and, and asked the Lord, what do I do? But I feel it's all part of this one new man rising. The time that we are in at the moment is this tension time. You know, as more um, Jewish people begin to have their eyes opened, um, and I think that corresponds with the more Gentiles that are becoming uh, to understand. It, we're in that time where I feel it's all part of what God is doing. And that um, I asked at church if I could um, have a group called the One New Man Rising and bring some teaching, but it wasn't really accepted. So um, the pastor said to me, you, you know, why don't you just invite people around to your house outside of ch church, which is what I'm doing. So I, I do meet, and I do have a, a small group that we, that I ask these questions and I do bring a little bit of teaching, but this Easter, I just, you know, I feel torn in two because my, I want to, I know I will celebrate um, the Passover on the correct time, but who with? <laughs> because, you know, you have to be part of a community, really. I can do it myself. But, um, and so on Sunday when it's Easter and everybody's going to church and there are baptisms taking place, you know, I feel so awkward. I, I really, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. But, but, and I would love to be able to talk more with other people about it. Thank you, Elaine. Hannah, Corsa, are you still on? I am still on. This is a difficult morning, but okay, let me just start by saying, Uli, thank you. This is the table of the Lord. We have come to the Lord's table. This is all about the blood communion. It's, it's you have opened up a discussion. And I mean, I, I don't know if I started this by responding to a very, very short post on the community thread, but I, I felt so strongly from the Lord this time, don't pass it by, Hannah, you cannot pass it by this time. So I want to start, I mean, I'm not a concise person, I've got three minutes, and I, I don't even know how to pull this together. I could not come on the call last night for the national repentance. Um, the Lord pulled me into a place of zeal for his house and the fear of him. My voice is going to start shaking now that I have never been in before. I had to do my own personal repentance last night for this issue. Elaine, that was a beautiful segue. I know there's many people like you hurting in this. And I have since the time that uh, I've come into all of this, um, I have celebrated all of the festivals uh, by myself. It's, it's not the easiest thing to do but my family refuses to move with this. And so I am alone in it and the churches that I walk with and fellowships refuse to move in this. So um, I, I am under something that I've never been un under before Watchmen. So please pray for me and bear with me. I don't want to, to use my mouth to say things that offend, but I was, I was very conscious when you said you weren't sure how many people were on Uli, that there were 40. And that's a time of moving into a new level of maturity. And I will be very, very direct this morning and say, I do not believe judgment yet is upon the nations. I believe it's upon the remnant within the nations. And I believe judgment is upon the global watch right now saying, you need to have this conversation you need to guide watchmen to know where they're not only standing on the wall, but what they're standing in. Because when I finally calmed down last night before him, I said, are you angry, Abba? And he said, no, Anna, I'm grieving. I am grieving at this situation because there is enough information available to every single believer right now to sort this out. It's not a question of not having the information. It's a question of stubbornly refusing to move into where I'm calling you to move. So I'm going to put that out as a challenge. You must discern and weigh anything anyone ever shares. It's not because I have the final answer. It's because 
I am trying to press into him to say right now, Father, what, what is happening in all of this? And what he's saying is, let me put it to you very straight, Hannah. Who is the cornerstone of the faith you believe in that you contend for? It's a person, Yeshua HaMashiach. You call him the rock. He's the cornerstone of the temple. Who is the cornerstone of iniquity? Who is the cornerstone of the Antichrist system? It's Constantine. He came in to an already birthed one new man and he broke it apart and he set up a system and the church grew out of that system and is still in that system. And he's saying, I hate mixture. Look it up in the Torah. And if, if you don't like the word Torah, it simply means directions or instructions or people, this is how you hit the mark. And he says, as Lynette said, you can't do both. You can't have a foot in one world and a foot in another. It's it, We've come to that point, guys. Uh, he's serious about the, here I go, I'm sorry, I'm really feeling his heart right now. But it really matters to him. We cannot pray and declare and decree a blockage and a, a demolition of anti-Semitism and walk in it. We can't do both. He won't tolerate it. It's breaking his heart. So, Uli, thank you for having the conversation dorothea if you're on thank you for stepping out on the signal thread it took a lot of courage i know i private posted you but i want to i want to lift your name up before my fellow watchmen to say this is an hour we're being asked to be courageous kim almer if she's still on she put in the chat and i'm, I'm sorry i, I missed ex the exact wording but she said when judgment comes, it's always redemptive. It's always to cause us to examine what he's asking us to transition into. And what he is asking right now is Ruth Company mature. You must grow up. It's costly. It is costly to be in covenant commitment with the living God today. And it's going to be more costly going for, and I'm going over time. I'm sorry, I just noticed the clock. So uh, forgive the emotion. Um, Thank you, Uli, for bringing us to the table and having this conversation. And thank you for everyone in participating. And Elaine, you are so right when you say we must continue this conversation until people can find their, their way of walking this out in peace. We are to be led by the peace of Messiah. So blessings, everyone. Thank you. Marcia, I want to hear you. Yes, uh, blessings to everybody. Um, as I'm listening to all this, um, did you know that the Holy Spirit came from Jerusalem and then it went to all nations? So I'm just going to read a scripture, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, but you shall receive power after that, that the Holy Spirit is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto both in Jerusalem and all Judah and all Samaria and onto the ultimate part of the earth. So the way I see it is that with all the feasts and Easter and everything, it all comes back to Israel and where the Holy Spirit came from originally in Israel. And, and then it just went everywhere around the whole world to all nations. So when we're stuck about something, we ask the Holy Spirit to help us because we're all united in one family. Okay, so there shouldn't be division. The devil tries to cause division and, um, and we're, we're just a part of a family united with Father God, Jesus and Holy Spirit. And it gives great joy for for God to see that we are united, we love him, we, sh we, we, we celebrate the resurrection of Yeshua, uh, that he's a living, loving God that has mercy on us, on each one of us, brothers and sisters, as well as unbelievers. Um, and um, I'll just quickly, uh, I know we've got a short time, but just quickly let you know, um, yesterday, because I'm from Melbourne, Australia, there was a rally about the um, 
Palestinians, um, you know, they're causing trouble and saying things, you know, crying out and all. But I shouted out, Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's come here to love, to give peace, to give joy, and nothing more than that. And so I think if, if we make things complicated, it will be complicated. But if we keep it simple, what the scripture says, just follow the word of God. I think we're all going to be in the right way. I mean, yes, celebrate the feast. Celebrate um, the resurrection of, of Yeshua. As long as we, we, we say, um, we, we talk about Yeshua to everyone, um, I think God's going to be proud of us. So anyway, I'm joyful for now <laughs> in talking about Yeshua. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, because I think this, this uh, showed uh, quite a different aspect to what Hannah was sharing. And I sometimes ask myself if God gives us different levels of revelation, I believe there is one absolute truth that is Yeshua. But, but concerning different questions that we have different levels of, of revelation and understanding depending on the, on the position God, God has us, God places us. And maybe um, God is calling you to, to educate the church about, about uh, your, about his appointed times and his calendar. And that is why you're not taking part in the traditional Easter Sunday service. Um, or maybe he, he places you uh, on a on a Easter Easter bunny market to share Yeshua with the unbelievers um, and pointing pointing uh, their focus away from all the pagan traditions and the and and that stuff to to the person to the cornerstone to the person that that really matters and my experience is that the feast of the Lord is like a portal that open opens our eyes to see God's heart for Israel and the Jewish people. But this is not the the final destination. It's this is not about Israel and the Jews only, and us doing like our own Jewish thing. But this is a stepping stone towards the full counsel of the Lord and the the full revelation of Yeshua on earth. And uh, we, we may be led to go with Yeshua outside the camp, even if that means uh, his like church culture. I'm not talking about leaving his body. Uh, I'm not talking about sectarianism and, 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 and knowledge that puffs up but I'm talking about, about uh, a heart-to-heart -heart encounter with, with Yeshua and, and listening, being in sync with the rhythm of his heartbeat. And, uh, and so I want to conclude that call with, with not with the, with the, communion or with the ironic blessing but but with just repeating that that question as as a prayer and leaving that question even for your own conversation with the lord um oh lord how shall i meet thee how welcome thee aright thy people long to create thee my hope my heart's delight O kindle, Lord, most holy, thy lamp within my breast, to do in spirit lowly all that may please you best. Lord, I pray that as this um, journey of consecration 
and and being low and of contrite spirit this is where you abide and i pray that that you you would lead us uh, and show us how we shall meet you in in these days how we are to connect with with your body how we are to uh, to be um, to let your light shine within us and i thank you for for the circumstances um, you prepare for us to uh, to share the gospel, to testify, to speak forth truth, uh, for uh, new, uh, yeah, for, for revelation of truth that will set us free. In the name of Yeshua, be blessed as you ponder about those hard questions and come up with your own personal answers. I, I bless you to receive to receive uh, the Lord that you would they would hear the Lord speaking to your heart um, direct answers from his heart, even to the hard questions that you place uh, on the altar. In the name of we love you. Thank you so much for this time to just uh, process and ponder all that God is doing. I do believe that this Easter, this Easter, I feel so awkward calling Easter Easter, but I, I believe the season really is a season of shift and there's more favor and more words that are giving, uh, God is going to give us to speak out, to realign uh, the body of Christ to his timeline. Don't shrink back because you're frustrated, you're angry, you're, you're pointing, you know, you're, all these things. Um, that's not the process. That's not Jesus' way. Jesus' way is, is always the way of love. And yes, he, he exhorted people, but it's amazing. If you look at the way he corrected his disciples, it's like, no wonder they you know, followed him because <laughs> there was truth there. And so our job is not to break up the church and to destroy it. I don't want to walk into our congregation that's not my, that must, uh, my right. It's not my responsibility. But I am a messenger. And I can ask God what words to speak to a community to get them back into right alignment. And I just posted a link to what I, I spoke to our church. And come what may, it's truth. So I'd like to share for just a second to, you know, once the congregation realized I was working as a grief counselor for this congregation and they knew that we were messianic believers and we had not been a part of that congregation for a couple of years and had I got an email asking if I would come and lead a Passover ceremony service for 150 children because they had no way to explain to them what it actually meant and I went and I planned on actually doing the demonstration and a dinner with the 150 children. They didn't tell me that there would be the parents of those 150 children that were there. It ended up being over 300 people. And it was, I did it shaking in my flesh. I can yeah. tell you. Then you <laughs> and, know you're in the spot. <laughs> yes, because you're on this in the spotlight, but you know, it, I still get feedback where the people I, and some of them that were there were Jewish and had really interesting questions um, in regard to celebrating the feasts and festivals today and how can that happen and blend with believers in the Christian community. And I said, well, it's a you're embracing this just by having me to come in and share. And so now once a year, they're sharing and they have people in their community that are having satyrs in their homes. And so you just don't know when you are willing to really love and to step out and share what God has revealed to you through his yeah. word that he will open those doors. 
Amen. Well, we just got an, an invite to one of our pastor's daughters home for a Passover Seder, April 22nd. That's next generation picking it up. <laughs> now, I, I, as I'm uh, browsing through the chat and, and the participants list, I say, I see so many uh, names uh, that, of people I highly respect. I know you've been faithful in your walk with the Lord. You have your own testimony uh, with all these questions on the table. And I, I beg your pardon that we didn't split in breakout rooms to give more, uh, space to more people to, to share. Uh, so thank you for even your humility uh, to, be, uh, to be quicker in listening than, than to speak. But I encourage you to, to speak up uh, in, in your surrounding, even in the Global Watch uh, community thread. And, and to keep that an, an ongoing topic, because as, as Sue said, I believe that, that there, is, there is a time window where, where God brings these questions up and where he will bring revelation and clarity and light. And uh, on his path, it is the way of love, but also of peace and of a deep inner joy. And with all these three, with love, peace, and that deep inner joy that only, yeah, he, he uh, can, he's the source of this because this is, this is a joy in, in Yeshua himself, not in all the outward things. But with those three, I bless you for this uh, coming weekend and the extra time you have <laughs> due to the holy bank holidays. In, in pondering these questions. May you be richly blessed. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Thank you, Lily. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Enjoy.